G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I thought I'd give you my November 2020 update and it's not good news. So in my October 2020 fish room update tour, you would have seen that I had successfully spawned my third batch of Alto Lamprologus calvus, my white calvus. And I caught 95 fry out of that spawn. And it was the largest spawn that they've had out of the three spawns they've given me. And unfortunately, over the span of a week, I lost pretty much all of them. Um, I've only got about four or five fry left. And I'm extremely disappointed and angry at myself for letting this happen. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's, down to, down, it's just downright laziness on my part. But I've learned a big lesson from this. And I hope you guys do too, so you don't have to have this frustration that I have right now and anger that I have in myself. So I basically put it down to not having the tank clean enough for the calvus fry. If you saw that video, you'd notice that the, the tank wasn't exactly clean. Um, and to be honest with you, it was filthy. And um, there was a lot of mulm or it's almost pretty much feces, I suppose you could say, on the bottom of the tank, if I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Um, there was feces on the bottom of the tank and I hadn't cleaned it out from the last lot of fish I had in there. So calvus fry, when they're free swimming, they're not generally free swimming for a, a, a while. They will, they'll just hop off the, off the bottom of the tank and get their food. When they're, when they're eating, they'll swim into the water column, eat, and then they'll go down to the bottom of the tank and they'll basically sit so they were sitting on this mulm, I'll call it. And I was of the opinion that it was beneficial for them because there'd be microorganisms living in that mulm that they could feed off during the day. And that would benefit them. And now looking back on it, I do recall seeing fry after a few days developing like this white fringing on the edges of their lower fins, like the, like the anal fin the pelvic fins and the lower tail. And I didn't think much of it. And I was feeding them live brine shrimp, live microworms, pellets soaked in aquarium water, mice and shrimp. They were eating, uh, but then quickly dying. Uh, every day I'd find like five, 10, 15 dead in one day. And uh, yeah, I still can't believe it. Oh, I'm just really pissed off at myself for letting this happen. I thought the same thing was happening um, where I had a problem with the first two batches where the lifting of the glass lid and clinking the glass was um, sending a shockwave in the water. I didn't even have a lid on that tank uh, at all. So that wasn't the problem. I covered the tank for about three days, took the cover off and noticed they were pretty much all gone. And yeah, from 95 fry, I'm basically down to four or five fry left. Seriously, it's probably been a week, maybe two weeks now since I got down to that many fry left and not a day goes by where I, where I don't think of it. Like I, I'm always constantly thinking of it. I've lost sleep over it. Really, really annoyed at myself, really angry at myself for not having that tank clean. Lesson learned here is keep the bottom of the tank clean for these guys. Next time it happens, obviously I'm gonna have the, the tank spotless. I'm also gonna put a sand bed in that tank, clean, fresh sand for them to sit on. So they're not sitting on the bottom of the glass and they'll be protected. Um, and yeah, I just, I just don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, really um, disappointed in myself and um, I apologize if I've let any of you down, uh, but I want to be honest with you guys. This is what it is like running a fish room. It's not always a success. There are failures and I'll always want to be honest with you guys and show you my failures. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and obviously I'm going to learn from those mistakes myself. Um, so I wait on a negative note. On a positive note, I have spawned some other fish, some fish I've never spawned before. And those were my Kawanga Gold. So 
uh, um, Lake Malawi cichlid, the only Malawian cichlid I have in the fish room that I basically use as, as dither fish for my Nealam prologus tetrocephalus that are in the four foot tank down here. Uh, they spawned, uh, it's the second time I spawned them. The first time I spawned them, the female was immature. Uh, she wasn't a mature female and she unfortunately ate the brood. That was months ago. And this time a larger female had a mouthful. She was holding in the tank for about four or five days before I decided to pull her out and pop her in a tank at the top. She spat the fry out about oh, three weeks later and I have 30 Coenga gold fry and they're all doing absolutely fine because they are mid-water fish. They, they come out of their mother's mouth, free swimming, completely free swimming, not touching the bottom of the tank and they're completely fine. All my other cichlids are perfectly fine. They don't sit on the bottom of the tank and they don't get infections from the mom that's at the bottom of the tank on that, on that glass. So lesson learned, keep the bottom of your tanks clean. Anyway, I said I don't want to end on a, on a, on a negative note, so I'm just going to end this video here. Hope you found this video informative and useful. I really do hope it helps you guys. Um, please learn from my mistakes because 95 Calvus Fry, I felt so sorry for him and I'm extremely disappointed and angry myself for being lazy and not having that tank clean before I put them in there. Anyway, again, hope you found the video informative. Please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing so you can follow me on my journey. And um, yeah, I'll wrap this video up now, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.